Hey guys, this is Rushi and Arshdeep, and today we'll be learning about heat sinks and how they affect climate change. This is how heat sinks work. Heat travels from an object of high temperature to an object of lower temperature in a process called conduction. Heat sinks are devices used in many everyday objects in order to absorb or remove access they can be found in common everyday objects such as laptops and other electronics such as tablets. On Earth, oceans act as heat sinks by absorbing all the excess heat and sending it down to the lower bodies of water. Since oceans are enormous and cold, it takes a large amount of heat to increase their temperature, therefore making them the ideal heat sink. Water has a much greater capacity to store heat in comparison to air. That's another reason for why oceans are ideal heat sinks. The thermohaline circulation, also known as THC, is a part of the large-scale ocean circulation and that's what's responsible for moving ocean waters all around the world. So it's the thermohaline circulation. And so basically what it is, let's say we have the earth here. And this is like the land. And then all this area is the water. So what this circulation does is it'll transport, it's basically one big circle. So it'll go in one big circle and the ocean currents will travel along with it. And it'll transport all the water all around the world. So basically with the thermohaline circulation, the warmer waters from the bottom, we know that they're more dense and as they move along north, they reach less dense waters and therefore they will drop and bring the heat along with them. And that's what's responsible for bringing all the heat into the bottom of the waters. Yeah. The starting temperature of the water is 25 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the metal is up to 175 degrees Celsius. The warm metal was then taken from the hot plate and then placed into the cold water. Thermometers were placed in the beaker full of water to measure the temperature. As you can see now, the temperature of the water has increased to, to 31 degrees Celsius. This is because it was able to absorb the heat from the metal through conduction. The water in the beaker was able to absorb the heat very effectively. This is very similar to how the ocean is able to effectively absorb the excess heat from the earth. The effect. There are three effects that occur on earth when oceans act as heat sinks. The first effect is sea ice melting. So sea ice melting. When most of its heat is stored at the bottom of the ocean, it is guaranteed that the overall temperature of the waters will rise. This means that the sea ice is at a high risk of melting. 
This brings us to the second point, which is the increase in sea levels. So, sea level rise. When the ice melts, the melt goes straight into the ocean, and that means that the water levels will increase, and that therefore increases the overall sea level. And lastly, it creates a halt in global warming. Halt in global warming. This halt occurs because rather than the Earth's heat getting trapped in the air, it actually goes straight into the ocean, and we know this because water has a greater capacity to store heat than air. The following video is a time lapse showing Arctic ice melting over a span of 25 years, from 1990 to 2015. The seasonal ice shows as dark blue, while older ice, which is over 9 years old, appears as white. Near the end of the video, you will easily see how the older ice is running drastically low over these years. The main effect. We know that there are three effect ocean heat sinks cause. The main one that impacts climate change the most is actually the halt in climate change. This halt occurs because all the heat is going straight to the bottom of the ocean where we won't feel a temperature rise. So for example, we have the ocean here and then the sun and we can draw in some air. So the heat that's coming from the sun as well as other things like pollution, stuff like that, it goes all the way down to the bottom of the ocean since the ocean stores heat better than air. And therefore we don't feel it at all when it's down here, whereas if it had been in the air we would have noticed a much more significant temperature rise. Interesting information. When water heats up, it expands. So let's say we have water here. When this is actually heated, it begins to take up a lot more space and this is why about Half of the past century's rise in sea level is attributable to warmer oceans simply occupying more space. Another fact is that currently, sea levels are rising about 3 millimeters per year. So let's see. Wrong color. So sea levels are rising about 3 millimeters per year. Whereas on the other hand, land is actually dropping by 6 to 10 millimeters per year. So 6 to 10 millimeters subsidence. And this is definitely not a good thing because we know that if this continues that a lot of land will quickly go underwater. Another fact that we actually have is that a recent study says we can expect the ocean to rise about 2.5 to 6.5 feet by 2100. So say we have the ocean here and then there is some land on top. This by 2100 is estimated to rise about 2.5 to 6.5 feet and you can easily see that most of this land will be underwater by then, which is obviously not a good thing. And this actually puts 146, 146 to 216 million homes at a risk of flooding. At a risk of flooding. So just to recap, we know that a heat sink is a device used to absorb excessive or unwanted heat. So a heat sink absorbs heat absorbs heat and currently on earth we know that oceans are acting as natural heat sinks and this is because water has a greater capacity to store heat rather than air so oceans are natural heat sinks and now this has caused three main effects three main effects and those are melting of sea ice and this in turn has caused a rise in sea level since so these are interrelated so a rise in sea level and lastly we know that and this is probably the most important it has caused a halt in global warming So that's our lesson, and hopefully you learn from it. Tune in next episode to learn about the Coriolis effect.